Hi everybody, it's Mike Harlan. Welcome to Worship Life Live. And we're doing a little extra something special here because we had somebody very special today in our Lifeway Chapel, Miss Natalie Grant. Natalie, welcome to Lifeway. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you. God used you. Our, our, we meet every other week uh, in chapel mm -hmm. here and it's usually preachers, which we have great preachers and I'm <laughs> very grateful for that. But every once in a while, a special voice comes along to lead mm -hmm. us in worship. Natalie, the Lord used you powerfully today, so thank you for your thank faithfulness you. to serve. Thank you. It's my privilege. My privilege. Well, when uh, we share these videos, um, a lot of times it's worship pastors mm -hmm. that are watching this, people that are on the front lines of what mm -hmm. we do in leading God's people in the Song of Faith. What word of encouragement <laughs> or uh, challenge would you share just from your perspective? You know, I love worship pastors because I'm such a local church girl. And I grew up in the local church. I started serving on a worship team before I was ever 10 years old. And my worship pastor that I had then is still one of my dearest friends and speaks into my life on a regular basis. And worship pastors, you honestly, you're like heroes because hmm. you do what you do um, sometimes without getting the thanks us church people, we like to complain more than we like to praise. And so sometimes you hear all this stuff like it's too loud, I don't like that song, I want to hear that song. And let me just say to you for a moment that you are heroes to me because yeah. somebody um, invested in my life, I'm able to do what I do now because they took the time to um, invest in my life and to build me up and not to build themselves or their own this or their own that, but to take the time to actually build in people and be champions of people. And being a worship pastor is so much more than just leading people and ushering them into the presence of Absolutely. God. It's actually being a champion of the people who are coming up Absolutely. alongside of you to minister with you. And um, so that's my Yeah, we've got, to give, we've got to give our people <laughs> more than just opportunity. Yes. You can get opportunity to sing on the corner here mm -hmm. in Nashville. You've got to give them meaning and, and development mm -hmm. as a disciple of Christ. I mean, he, he's, he didn't say go and make music. He said right. go and make disciples. That's right. And you have people pouring into your life. And Absolutely. now you have that opportunity to pour in other people's lives. So, mm -hmm. so everyone knows the voice and the great <laughs> songs that God has allowed Thank you to you. write and to sing. What are the other parts of Natalie Grant's ministry? What are the other parts of your life? where it rounds it out. It's more than just the singing and, right. and on the, under the lights and on the stage. And you know, I spent a lot of years of my life striving. And striving is just a killer. <laughs> because when you strive so hard for something, then you get there and you went, oh wait, this wasn't what I'd hope it'd be. So then you start striving for something else. And I did, you know, this is Christian music that I get to be a part in, but my husband once said something that was just so wise to mm. me. He said, this is not the Christian music industry. This is the industry of selling music to Christians. And there's a big difference. There is. And what you have to maintain is your own heart before the Lord of yeah. humility, of surrender, um, because this is still a business like anything else. And um, it's been really a gift to be a part of it, but the ministry aspect, I could, for a while there I was looking to other people to kind of tell me what to do. And then I really realized before the Lord that He didn't call them to the ministry that mm. He gave me, He called me to it. So what is it that He's calling me to do? Yeah. Um, and so that really came for me um, when I started focusing less on the music and more on my own spiritual life and getting real. And once I started doing that and writing songs that were very real and transparent, I started to notice people really understanding and loving and grabbing a hold of my music in a totally different way. You did something in chapel this morning and I want to ask you to unpack just a little bit because some of the people that watch uh, the interviews I do sometimes are, are students uh, in mm. my class, by the way, you, you're going to be tested on this. Um, <laughs> Or, or aspiring artists or people that are in ministry. Mm. This morning, you picked a part of the concert where you became very vulnerable, mm. where you went to, you even talked about uh, your dark period <laughs> and shared, I mean, you, didn't, you certainly didn't share too much, but yeah. how do you know, how do you navigate that? Where, where, where is the right mm. place to, it's what's appropriate to share, right. where do you stop? And what I think is funny is that, um, we ask ourselves those questions all the time, like, is it appropriate to do this here or is it appropriate to do this there? And I would say that it's always appropriate to be authentic yeah. and to be well real 
And as soon as we start thinking that we have to put on a show because this is that, and I, I'm only saying it because I fall into that trap yeah. all the time. There's those voices whispering in my head that say, okay, they're not gonna get this. They're yeah. not gonna appreciate it. This isn't the right audience for that, or yeah. this isn't the right audience for that. But what I always come back to is, you know what? I'm just gonna get up. I'm gonna be who it is that God's made me to be, not trying to put on any airs, because when I yeah. do that, I have a voice that I can sing. I mean, I know I can sing a song, but then it's just a song. Yeah. It's just another song and yeah. another singer. And I don't want to just be another singer. The world doesn't need another singer. The world doesn't need another song, but they're desperate for hope. And yeah. I want to be a That's truth awesome. teller through music. And so coming to the Lifeway Chapel, I thought, oh, is this the place to be vulnerable? And I thought, you know what? Those of us who are in Christian ministry or inundated with Christianity all the time, every day, all day, That's right. sometimes we're the ones that are hurting the most. Absolutely. And we've got things that we're carrying that we actually think we can't talk about out loud. And so my prayer before I walked in today was, Lord, just there are probably some deep wounds that people are carrying and help us reach to the deep places. Yeah. And, and you know, I've already told you do. this, but, but one of the places you went today, mm. uh, I knew of a situation in our employee group uh, from that I learned about yesterday mm. and something you shared went right to the heart of what I knew that person mm. who was sitting four rows behind mm. me where they were living and that's just you might have looked at the song set and said you know stylistically it doesn't fit right. there or maybe <laughs> this is in the right place or I don't right. have the full band mm -hmm. to pull that off with and yet it was exactly the message that mm. that person intended and that's that's the beautiful thing about God's mm. leadership in our lives what he wants is this dynamic relationship mm -hmm. with you for you to experience his leading and to see how he uses his leading you and then he uses that unique experience with each one of us he desires relationship not mm -hmm. ritual not right. template i'm preaching sorry <laughs> and i love it bring uh, it <laughs> all right all right let's shift gears because we don't have much yes. more time and we got to get to lunch um <laughs> there's a songwriter sitting there mm. and they're staring at a blank page but they that they, they want to write a song mm. they want they, they're not sure they know how <laughs> right encourage encourage the beginning songwriter that really wants to be creative for the Lord. I was never a songwriter. So I started out my first record, I didn't write a single thing because I just said, I'm a singer. That's yeah. what I do. I'm just, I'm a singer and there's other people that, that do that. <laughs> and yeah. I'm gonna let them sing my songs. But then I realized that, um, okay, a singer is just a singer, but a storyteller mm. is where the heart comes from. Mm. and. Um, you know, everybody has their different process. I'm married to a, a songwriter and a producer, mm -hmm. and he's like a, a pro what I would call a prolific songwriter, yeah. where he writes and writes and writes for everybody else. He can just wake up that day and say, I'm writing with this person today, right. and I'm writing, and they just go and write a song. Yeah. I'm totally different than that. So if you're not like that, be encouraged. There's hope for you. <laughs> um, when I just sit and decide I'm going to write, and I look at a blank sheet of paper, that blank sheet of paper is screaming at me so loud <laughs> that I can't do it, it's too much pressure. And so then once I begin to just think, okay, what is God teaching me in my life? What is he doing in my life? And usually when I stop trying yeah. to write a song, yeah. the song comes. And I've done my greatest songwriting in the car when I'm driving down the road. Thank yeah. goodness that my iPhone has a voice memo. <laughs> yes. um, and so I think that's the thing, is that um, being a songwriter is like, bearing your soul. Yeah. It's so hard. It, I know the fear that comes with sharing something that's so precious and intimate and the risk of someone saying, that is no good. Um, I have written so many no good songs before <laughs> I got to a good one. <laughs> so you got to have the yeah. no goods before you have the Tenacity. real good. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Last question. Yes. Um, you, you go to a lot of places mm. with a lot of Christians across denominations, across mm -hmm. Uh, ge geographical locations, even the world. Mm. From your perspective, what's God doing in His church? Mm. What, do you, what do you see? What do you, what do you sense is happening in the body right now mm. from, from the seat you have? You know, especially in the American church, um, what I see is that s for so many years, we allowed religion to replace relationship. And I only know because I grew up in a pretty legalistic mm. church and we had so many rules and that we thought this was righteous living and when we start talking about that, that legalism can come in and it absolutely makes us um, not effective to a hurting world. And um, we allow politics and things to get into the yeah. church that doesn't belong there. Yeah. Jesus just said, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. And when we come to him, life change will happen for some overnight, for some it's a process. But what I really feel like is that he's waking the church up from mm. their religion and saying, okay, we've been thinking that this is the way to do this and this is the way to do that. The message of God is unchanging. It doesn't need to be updated or told in a clever way. Mm -hmm. That message is unchanging, but I think that what he's doing is he's really kind of digging in to the deep spots in his followers and saying, yeah. okay, you gotta rid yourself of this and rid yourself of that. And I really see that around the world where there's not a culture of Christianity, yeah. where there's not like a Christian music industry and a Christian this, and it, th that stuff's pretty unique to America. Yeah. Yeah. But when you go around the world and you see these followers of Jesus that mm. are just desperate for him, because we're living in unprecedented times mm. where the hope of Christ is the only thing that could even possibly Absolutely. ground you. When you see people living that out, it just does something to Absolutely. you. It said, oh, this is what he's gonna start doing in America. Yeah. I know it, I know it, and I think he is. I believe that, and I believe part of that is a, a growing discontentment mm -hmm. in the believers in our country with the status quo where the mm -hmm. church is right now. And that, that's when we begin, we get desperate enough and dissatisfied enough with mm -hmm. the now is when we'll be ready to embrace what God wants to do Absolutely. next. Uh, I believe that. Well, thank you for what you do. Thank you for having me. I feel like I've made a new friend today. Ah, <laughs> oh, I feel I like that too. I appreciate the ministry. Um, thank you. And, and know this, we're, we're, we're serving Christ with you. Yeah. And, um, and sometimes wherever you are, whatever you might be doing, you feel like you're alone in this, just know there are a group of people like us that mm -hmm. care what you're doing. We're mm -hmm. praying for you. We love you. We're here to serve you. Please let us hear from you if we can help you anyway. Thanks for watching today.